Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. We've been having some 50-50. Uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Seth Rogen. A touching portrayal of what it's like to have a male friendship in the 2010s. Beset on all sides by... Well, have you seen them? I don't want to say anything if you haven't seen the movie. It's uh, Spoilers is pretty good. S1GR 7K GF. Excuse me, sir. You see the little deke? He tried to pull a little uh, Patrick Lion A grease on us there. I don't think so. It might be the first run of the day. I might be Azazel. I might be guaranteed to blow up there because my brain couldn't parse what was happening quickly enough, but that's okay. Patrick Lion A, if you're not. I'll do the rap genius, the egg genius for the referentials here. Patrick Lion A is a winger for the Winnipeg Jets, well known as being one of the most talented goal scorers in the National Hockey League right now. He also had the dirtiest Amish beard I've ever seen on a professional athlete in my entire life. I have heard that he has since shaved it off. It's none of my business, really, if he wants to have the world's worst beard he can. I just, you know, as a 29-year-old, I looked at a 19-20-year-old with that beard and said, It ain't worth it, dude. But more power to you. I got a hockey on the mind. Because I did, I went to the Canucks game last night. Preseason game. A lot of people say, you know, why waste your time going to see preseason games? I'll give you two pieces of information there, okay? One piece of information is seeing preseason games is excessively cheap. Even in a city where everything's expensive, 20 bucks. Decent seats to see the Canucks in preseason. That's not bad. I mean, you're not seeing all the NHL players you want, but like, it's roughly the price of a movie ticket. I didn't get any food at the arena because it's like way too expensive, so it's a relatively cheap night out, especially, you know, it's just me. The other reason is because I grew up in a town with an OHL team. It's the youth league. I don't know if you'd describe it as being one under the NHL, but people do sometimes go from the, N the OHL to the NHL. Usually they go from the OHL to a professional league like the AHL first, but anyway. And I saw, maybe from the ages of 0 to 18, I saw like four NHL games in my entire life. I'd always like drive up to Ottawa once every two years and see a game or something like that. And I vowed, you know, if I ever lived in a city that had an NHL team, I wouldn't take it for granted. You know, there's, I had the no access to that opportunity as a youngster and as an adult I do so I say if ever anybody's like hey do you want to go see this Canucks game I'm never going to be like oh it's preseason I'm more like oh my god these are the guys that are on the television like I still have that childlike wonder that being said it was probably the second worst uh, live hockey game I've ever seen in my entire life <laughs> I don't want to give you the play-by-play -play necessarily because I feel like a lot of people are disinterested. But I feel like even if you don't follow uh, sports or at least hockey specifically, you can you can feel my pain uh, my pain a little bit that uh, it's preseason and uh, they announced the roster and everybody went, "Who are these guys?" Like I'm a diehard. Uh, oh, why would I want to get a bomb out of that? That's very foolish. I'm a diehard Vancouver Canucks fan. I follow the team and I follow the prospects. And some of the dudes, when like the third line was ice last night, I was like, I have no idea who you are. I know the prospects, but it, like who the heck is like this person's name? I can't even remember the last name at this point. Anyway, dude, no keys is a real bummer here. Also, very hard to find the secret room apparently, but this run is otherwise looking great. Um, yeah, it sucked. Down 2-0 after the first period. 3-0 after the second. Scored one goal in the third, lost 4-1. Oh well. I mean, I don't mind. I, the worst game I ever saw was another preseason game where the Canucks lost 5-1. Kate literally fell asleep. Which was... I was not mad. <laughs> I was 0% mad because I was like, you know what? She's right. This is boring and bad. It's one of those games where you go and you're like, the team owes me money for being here. Like, I... If this had been a movie... I've never done this in a movie theater, but I've also never gone to see a movie this bad in theaters, I think. But, like, I 
if you went to the box office and you were like, give me my $15 back, I think you would have the ability to do so. You'd at least have the justification. I've never done that, but I have heard about that happening. I don't know if there's like a movie theater policy. I guess it's kind of like the honor system, right? Like you assume that for the average person out there, they would only ask you for a refund on the movie ticket if the movie was so bad that you would like inconvenience yourself enough. Like you're offended that it exists on a on like a moral level, selling a product that bad should not be allowed. Feel bad for the theater owner because it's not really their fault, but you know, if you went to see Avatar The Last Airbender in theaters, are you justified to ask for a refund in your mind, or is there there's no refunds allowed in movie theaters ever? I'm kind of like, you know, at this point, there's so many resources out there that, you know, there's you can account for personal taste, obviously, but you know, if you're going to see a movie that has like a 3% on Rotten Tomatoes and every newspaper gave a 1 out of 5 stars. There's got to be a little buyer beware in that. And similarly, what am I expecting going to see the, you know, the team that finished 4th worst in the NHL last season in a preseason game against an opponent who their main squad is in China right now for the preseason. You know, obviously they're not going to be icing the major players, so there's no refund to be asked for. I will say, I think it's another topic for conversation here. A lot of people are probably like, you just went to the game by yourself? I did indeed. I don't, um, I don't mind doing things alone for the most part. I think part of it is being an only child. And part of it, and this is just honest, but part of it is also like, you know, when I lived in Korea, I did like 90% of my activities alone. Because if I didn't do them alone, you just wouldn't do them at all. You know, I, I had a network. Hold on. Doesn't do anything. I had a network socially of like seven people. And they were also my coworkers. <laughs> so there were times where I was like, well, I want to go see this cool thing that I definitely could not see. Yeah, we'll take this, I guess. Um, that I definitely could not see in Canada. But I also don't want to see the people that I see every single day. And maybe they don't want to see me. It's not like I was the one making the choice. So yeah, you just learn to do it yourself, you know? I will, like, I have no qualms whatsoever. Seeing a hockey game by myself, I'll admit it's a little bit more, it's like a 5 out of 10 on the, not weirdness, but like apprehension level. Because, you know, I'm sitting there. There was another, like, solo uh, viewer sitting next to me. I know because, don't tell the administration, but I got my tickets on StubHub. Because I'm not going to pay 50 bucks to see a first line made of Utica Prospects. That was a bad play there, but it doesn't matter. You know, the run is, is very, very, very set. Sure, why not? Let's see how this works. Great rate of fire upgrade. Um, and, you know, I don't know who that person is but whenever bad things were happening i was muttering under my breath oh come on jesus christ right you know the 18th two on one against Derek pouliot and when things went well i was i'll admit it you know i'm a caricature of myself i was going let's go but like quietly not like shouting it but still you know you're, you're actually like talking you're interacting you're in a crowd so this that's not like your beginner level solo activity i guess Eating at a restaurant, I would do a solo, no problem. And I think we've, uh, I can't remember what side Austin was on. I thought he was on the same side as me in this one. One of the things that people think is the weirdest to do by yourself is go to a movie theater. I haven't done it in a long time. I was thinking about doing it this week for Mandy, that Nicolas Cage movie. The revenge thriller that's getting unbelievably good reviews. Because I can't resist the good Nicolas Cage movie. Which is very convenient, because there haven't been that many recently, so it hasn't, <laughs> hasn't really been like a big time sink, but... Um, going to see a movie by yourself is like, it's a 1 out of 10 in terms of any apprehension, anxiety, or difficulty. You literally just like sit in a quiet room, and you're not supposed to talk. The other good training for, for doing things alone, if you, if you desire it... You know, is uh, 
being at the airport, you know? I get that the airport is not always the most, uh... Well, consumer-friendly place to be, you know? Food is expensive, drinks are expensive. But eventually, you know, if you fly around enough, you're gonna end up with like an eight-hour layover and... I don't know, if you wanna be the person who looks at your phone at the gate the whole time... I'm not gonna tell you that it's your vacation, right? Do what you wanna do. I'm not about that kind of life, you know, do a little solo shopping... Grab lunch. You know, treat yourself. You'll figure it out. I'm just, I, I guess I'm being overly defensive, but yeah, doing, uh, like, solo activities that are often done in a group doesn't bother me at all. It's a, I wouldn't say it feels freeing. That's not really the word I'm looking for, but it's just like, I don't know. It's, it's literally, like, the same as doing them in a group. You know, you want to go see the game? Go see the game. Nobody goes with you? No, that's not their fault. They can do whatever they want. It's their lives. Why? I guess I didn't have the money to go to the shop. This one, it's popping off too fast. I gotta remember. We want to go dark room path, and I have screwed it up many, many times. I haven't screwed it up on this one yet, but I've screwed it up many times in my life. Let's get the heck out of here. There were also, you know, I don't know if anybody else feels like this, particularly for me, it's like at sporting events, but the crowd is like a sporting event in and of itself. I've had, you know, the game, well, this wasn't the 5-1 game, but like two years ago, I took my parents to see a game, and we were sat next to some drunken idiots who were trying to throw popcorn onto the ice, and everyone was like, hey, don't do that, and they were just like, <laughs> and uh, basically, I hope that they're dead. I'm sorry to say it. If you think that silently wishing for somebody's demise makes me a worse person than them being an incredible public nuisance, that's your opinion. You're welcome to have it. I disagree. In real life, I would say please and thank you. I would not throw marbles in front of them while they were roller skating. I just hope that like, you know, or, or they got better. They, they became less idiot like that would also be fine but that's like a that crowd that was like a 50 percent quality game 10 percent quality crowd this was like a 10 percent quality game but the crowd was really good you know i sat next to uh some dude who was wearing like a the 1978 style jersey you know he's probably had it for like 40 years if not well i mean it's literally 40 years i guess uh, let's see what this is. Here's, dude, our rate of fire is absurdly good right now. I can't believe the speed at which we're clearing out these floors. And then, like, behind us, there was a... An Australian couple, like a young family. They had their two kids with them. And they were freaking out. Like, they had no idea what was going on with hockey. And they kept asking their dad questions. And the dad didn't know what was up. But they apparently were big rugby fans, so they were, like, equating it to rugby. And I don't know what the heck goes on in rugby, so it was, like, a cultural experience for me. Like, the kid was like, Dad, the one team only has four players. And then the dad was like, yeah. The, and I apologize for this accent, by the way, because I apologize for it being so good that you thought I, you know, grew up in Australia. Um, dad was like, yeah, he's in the sin bin. And I went, how does this guy know where the sin bin is? And I realized, they must call it that in, in, in rugby? Because then the kid was like, is it like 10 in the bin? And then I went, what the heck is 10 in the bin? That sounds like a, like a British breakfast food. And then he went, yeah, but it's two in the bin. And then the kid went, two in the bin, two what? And then his sister, who I imagine had been annoyed by this line of questioning over her entire life so far, went, what do you think? Two hours! And then everyone laughed. And I was like, you know what? This family needs a sitcom, man. Australians living in Canada where things are largely the same. Or at least, you know, interpretable as the same, but slightly different. And then, you know, like three years ago, or maybe two years ago, I don't know. Kate and I went to see the Canucks against the Winnipeg Jets. And we sat in front of, like, a contingent of... You know, Vancouver's Finnish community. And they were all going, Let's go, Patrick! You get a new crowd at every... At every event, I suppose. I, hopefully you get a new crowd. <laughs> you get the idea. 
It's, like, it's its own beast, is what I'm trying to say. So we're on Necropolis 2. We have done boss rush. Is that correct? Yes. So we absolutely 100% want to take the negative and go down on that path. You know, we're not generating any flies, but you're forcing me to make a decision here that I'd rather not make. Which is... Oh no, we are generating flies. Disregard. So I'm going to keep... Uh, the fishtail. And the reason for keeping the fishtail here... Oh, that was a curse of the... Maze? Curse of the maze, yeah. It, it put our uh, death card in a place where we could pick it up. Now that I really care about this, or what we were previously holding, which I don't even remember because it was so useless. Anyway, just let me focus for two seconds. No anecdotes briefly. It's an anecdoteless area of the video. It's very bad damage, but life goes on. So take the negative. Take the negative. Thank you. Probably don't want to do boss rush. Nah, not for the rosary. It's pretty... I think multi-dimensional baby can be pretty good as a Zazzle, but... I don't know. I also... Like, I don't... Whenever I talk about, like, being recognized, it's mostly a joke. Like, it doesn't happen that often. But I swear to God, I walked into Rogers Arena last night, and I heard someone say, Hey, Northern. But... It was very quiet. And also... I, I was only like 60% that I heard, hey, Northern, okay? So, if you went to that game, I basically, I just kept walking. Because I was like, they say, hey, Northern? I don't want to be the guy, you know, and, you know, turn around and I go, yeah, hey, nice to meet you. What's your name? And they go, who the heck are you? I was saying, hey, Courtney, or something like that. If it was you, I apologize. It was not my intention to... Just screw you over like that with your your very nice saying of hello. You do, you know, in this situation, if you want to say hello, you got to be... It's got to be an unambiguous hello. You got to, like, tap me on the shoulder and be like, hello. Twitch.tv slash Northern Lion. YouTube.com slash Northern Lion. Either way, I'll accept it. Because if there's any ambiguity, I don't want to be the guy who's like... Oh, you recognize me from my plentiful YouTube videos. And they're like, who are you again? I thought you were the usher. I just read. This is the other reason I like going out. Just in general. I got so many other anecdotes. Like, to go, even at a Canadian stadium, to go into the stadium, you need to pass through metal detectors. Which is fine. You know, it's kind of par for the course. Uh. As I was going through the metal, well, just before I went through the metal detectors, there was a dude in front of me taking forever. And I was wondering, why is he taking forever? And then I looked at the little spot on the side where you, uh, you know, put your wallet, your keys and stuff like that, your cell phone when you go through the metal detector. So you can keep them in your sight at all times. And the dude that was going through just had an enormous bag of marijuana. Which is a little weird, because it becomes legal here you know, in three weeks or something like that. But I'm not saying it's weird like, well, he's committing a crime. I'm just like, it's more weird because it's weird for security because security's like, well, it's like not legal, but it is kind of about to be legal. Like, we're not going to arrest you for this. That's obviously just absurd at this point. So, um, but he was totally incredulous. They were like, you can't bring it into the arena. And he's like, oh, sorry, I didn't realize. And then they were just at a standstill. And they were like, well, do you want to throw it out or do you want to not come in for the game? And he's like, neither. And they're like, well, you got to do one. And he's like, okay, I guess throw it out. And then they took it and threw it out. It was a, just a bizarre interaction. Um, let's grab this. It is weird, though. Like, it's, uh... We don't have a guppy item yet. But you know what? Let me see. I was gonna say, if we got a spirit heart that changes things a little. Because I, I'm, the run's good, and I feel bad about having to be a Zazel, even though we don't have a choice in the matter. Um, I'm gonna take both of them, and I already took both of them. Hoping that we can become Guppy on the next floor, and if we do, we're really gonna love the fishtail. And if we don't, well, we're probably gonna be fine anyway. So just recall, we wanna go down to Shoal here. We have not beaten the Hush, but 
I really, I kind of want to save the Hush run for an Azazel run where we have Brimstone or are otherwise just unbelievably stacked. Our range is not bad, but could obviously be better. It's very strange here. We're in the... And I mean, this isn't going to get into sensitive issues as far as I'm concerned, at least. But, you know, marijuana has been legalized Canada-wide effective like October 17th, something like that. But... There's already, like, on every block in Vancouver, there's, like, dispensaries where apparently you can just walk in and be like, one drugs, please. And they will be like, here are your drugs, sir. And it's just... I guess where I'm getting at it is I, it doesn't bother me on, like, an ethical level at all. But I'm just like, what happens when it becomes legal and the government starts selling it to like really and here's how you know like it's it's northern lion being a radical capitalist okay i'm like what happens to all the small businesses when the government moves in but really i'm like there's like at least 200 dispensaries in vancouver alone what happens a month from now when it's like it's legal to sell but only under the government's terms are they just screwed or are they just gonna keep operating or I don't know man it's a bizarre situation it's like Thanos at the end of the second Avengers movie you know government took a long time to get the wheels in motion they went fine I'll do it myself and now you know the government's here and Thanos is like wait what <laughs> I put four hundred thousand dollars into this business you can't just you know it's it's a, it's a strange situation Especially because it's just like 100% tolerated here to begin with. It's like a laissez-faire sort of system set up. But anyway, I don't really know what I'm talking about. It's just we're at that intersection of like it being bizarre. It, it must be like what being alive at the end of like alcohol prohibition was like. Where you're like, there were nine years where you had to like risk getting arrested to drink a beer in like the basement of a bowling alley. And now, the government is like, yeah, you can drink them, but you just gotta pay us, like, 80 cents a bottle. It's just, uh, I mean, it's bizarre. A judgment-free bizarre. Uh, we don't want that, unfortunately. I think, forget this, dude, we're going to Shoal. Mostly so I don't forget to go to Shoal, but also because I don't really want to fight the Hush with this build. Damage-wise, totally fine. Range-wise, pretty bad. That was a little risky, but we made it happen. All right. Kind of like an ideal spawn point there. Thank you. I mean, we should stop this run. There should be nothing wrong with this one whatsoever. I have to tell you, though, I think I'm out of uh, hockey anecdotes. But that's pretty good for, like, a two-hour experience to provide, you know, 20 minutes of conversation it's very useful for me because otherwise I've, I've just been living this bachelor life and my life is like so uh, what's the word I'm trying to look for here because I, I want it I don't want to say easy because I mean I, I work hard my duties are simple but I, I do work hard or at least a lot <laughs> but then uh. It, I guess I, I'm in like a routine. I'm in like basic training right now when Kate's gone. Which is good, by the way. It's good that I'm living like a more responsible bachelor life than I would have if I were in my like early 20s. Like I made that big pot of chili. Here's what, I'll just give you my day, okay? This is what every single day has been like since my wife left for Japan. Uh, except for the day that I dropped her off at the airport because I had to cook the chili. But anyway... Uh, I wake up, maybe like 10, drink a couple of cups of coffee, have a, uh, a, a liquid breakfast, like a protein shake, almond milk, plant protein. I'm not trying to be preachy, I'm just giving you the minute details, okay? Record a couple of episodes of something, uh, maybe a few episodes of something, then it's lunchtime. Heat up some chili, eat a bowl of that, record a couple of episodes of something, plan the NLSS docket. Do the NLSS when the NLSS is done, eat a granola bar. Record a few episodes of something. Then it's dinner time, reheat the chili. 
That also basically marks the last video of the day for me. What do I do after that? I do my dailies in NHL 19 because I'm addicted, but I have it under control. And then uh, I uh, basically do that for like, I don't know, maybe like two hours while I'm watching something on Amazon Prime or Netflix or something, another streamer on Twitch or something like that. I go to bed, watch an episode of American Vandal, fall asleep. Wrote every single day. And I like it. But it is also getting a little tedious already. Because <laughs> the thing is, like... I don't know, like... I see shades of my younger self, like... Oh, dude, this is ideal. We're small, but we got the Stompy upgrade. Which is irrelevant here, I guess. And actually bad in most situations. But, like... Well, let me put it this way. I don't see shades of myself, or my younger self, in Austin when he orders DoorDash every day. But I do see uh, shades of my younger self to some extent in Rob, where he's like, Ed, what did I do today? I made like a, a booyah base, and it was delicious, you know? Like, I would live an aggressively and probably tediously efficient lifestyle if I were single. Now, the danger is that I think, you know, when you're in your early 20s, maybe you go, that's ideal, you know? Like, no real wasted time. As an adult, I realize, you know, my, my wife and I, this is one of the reasons we work really well together, we compliment ourselves. I am the kind of guy who's, if she, she's like, I want to eat, like, Indian food. I was like, I'll order Indian food for you, but it's kind of expensive, so I'll eat a sandwich. And then she's like, that's dumb, just get some Indian food. And I'm like, you know what, you're right. And then I eat the Indian food and I'm like, this is delicious. Thank you for forcing me to get over my own idiocy and doing it. So I need, like, I mean, long-term especially, I need someone like that to, I don't want to say force me out of my comfort zone, but to be like, hey, it's okay for you to spend, like, more than $1.50 on dinner tonight. <laughs> and I'm in Twitch chat, like, <clears throat> sorry, I'm in Twitch chat, like, you know, the chili is a macronutrient-rich profile, I checked it. It's got all the amino acids. Don't start with me. All right. We are done. Once we finish this... Run went actually very well. Just a very calm run. You know, like... If I'm being honest with you... Over the past uh, four days, I have actually made, like... Maybe six dishes. Which is incredible. You know, I use the same bowl for chili. Once I finish eating it, I just rinse it so it's good to go. No thank you on the victory lap just yet. I rinse the spoon. I got the blender bottle. When I'm done with that, I wash it out. Demon baby appeared. Oh, fantastic. Like, it's been efficient there, but at the same time, my body is like, hey, wouldn't it be nice to eat like a potato? And I'm like, yeah, but then I gotta go to the store. Anyway, you get the. I'm not gonna belabor the point. We'll save it for a future episode. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It's a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you wanna see more in the future. And hey, follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Northern Lion. Be notified of when I make live content there so you're not missing anything. If you're only watching the YouTube, you're only getting like 50% of the beast. Either way, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. See ya!